Welcome back. Okay, dragon riding is awesome. Today I'm going to get you up to speed on all there is to know, some handy tips, and even a weak core that puts you into the cockpit of an F-35. Kind of. Also, today's sponsor. Our patrons with the new December loot, which uh, if you are on our Patreon through the end of December on the tier, then you'll get this awesome pin, as well as, of course, everything else that is uh, going on there. Uh, we've got the class card, we've got the awesome art, of course, videos as we make them, so early, and uh, a whole bunch, a whole bunch else, lore walking podcast, and uh, we are making big, big old plans to put more and more into that as uh, as time goes on, especially in the new year. So, patrons, thank you. You are honestly the backbone of uh, what we do as we try to make more ambitious series like the Big Dragon series, which we definitely want to do more of in the future. Uh, it's you guys who are keeping it real, making it all possible. So, name of the credits, awesome loot, more great shit like that. Hit up the link down below. Okay, acquisition. There are four types of dragon. There's a drake, proto drake, Velocidrake, drake, and wilder drake. The game's files actually have a fifth, the slither drake, but it's not currently implemented. All four of these dragon riding mounts are obtained by just doing the leveling campaign. Simple. There are, of course, many appearances to unlock, though, and this is done by obtaining Drake Watcher manuscripts, which come from quests, exploration, achievements, professions, and renown, plus a few other things. What's fantastic is that when you're customizing, you can mouse over any locked appearance to see where it actually comes from, so we don't need to list them all out here. In addition to the body, face, and accessory customizations, there are also two full transformation customizations available. These are pretty hard to get, though. Uh, the Storm Eater one is from Mythic Razageth, and Crimson Gladiator is from getting Gladiator rank in Season 1. So that's pretty darn hard. Dragon Riding's profession track is all in glyphs, which uh, basically unlock talent points for you. Now, these are unlocked account-wide, so you'll only need to collect the glyphs once in your whole account, and that'll let your alts fully spec out their riding as soon as they hit the aisles. I mean, hell, because they'll have the dragon mounts unlocked, they can literally fly off the boat and get going immediately. Now, getting the glyphs is very simple. There are 48 of them scattered across the aisles, 12 in each zone. Now, for the most fun, obviously, go hunt these down yourself like you're playing Mario 64 for the first time. For a bit of a tip, if you're close to a glyph, then there will be a buff on your bar and that will let you know if one is close. Of course, if you've got a goopy gamer brain, as many of us do, then you can just paste this list of coordinates into an add-on called TomTom, Tom, and if you use another add-on called Paste, then you can input all of these in at once, which is pretty handy. I wouldn't begrudge someone wanting the dragon riding power quick, because as much as it is immediately fun, it really is bloody incredible of a power fantasy when you've got all of the glyphs and all the talents unlocked. Personally, I will be collecting these glyphs as I level on my first character. If you'd rather just see a map, then you can screenshot the ones that are just on the screen right now. You'll be able to find many of these just as you progress through questing. Quite a lot of them are, of course, quite high up, so you may just need to, you know, use some vigor to get some height, wait for the vigor to regen, and just kind of climb your way up. Let's talk mechanics and getting the most out of this. It is simple in face value, but there is a little bit of depth to how the dragon riding works, and that lets those armed with knowledge soar far faster and further than the rest. Okay, the basics are, of course, Surge Forward and Skyward Ascent, which uh, do exactly what you would expect based on their names, with each costing Vigor, the dragon riding resource. You'll later get the ability to ride on the Isle's Winds by doing the Onoran Plains campaign, uh, Whirling Surge, a large, large Surge Forward in the Azure Span, and then Bronze Timelock from the Thaldrassus campaign. Time lock is very cool in particular because it lets you return to the point you began dragon riding from. That's perfect for redoing a botched flight, or perhaps going, picking up a glyph, teleporting back to your high spot, and going to get another glyph. Now, what's essential to manage is Thrill of the Skies. This will slowly generate vigor while you're flying, but only if you're going at a fast enough speed, and it's denoted by the blue effect on your character. Managing this is essential. Lose speed and you'll lose the buff, meaning you'll no longer regenerate your vigor and that lull cascade and you just won't go as far. First up, 88 degrees is the ideal angle for getting maximum speed and distance while still maintaining the Thrill of the Skies buff. Then, 
when you use Skyward Ascent to gain altitude, you've got like 3.5 seconds before you lose the Thrill of the Skies buff. So timing all of that stuff right and keeping a solid angle is absolutely key. Master these and you will go really far. Now, talents also help a lot here. Many increase your vigor in flight regeneration, total amount of vigor, and the amount of vigor that you generate between flights. With maxed vigor and max thrill of the skies, you can almost fly indefinitely. It feels super powerful, super fast, and it totally nails the dragon riding fantasy. And really, if there's one thing that you need to know, it is specifically the mechanics of Skyward Ascent, right? If you use it right, then you can fly indefinitely. You will be so fast and so powerful, okay? So here's the way that it basically works. While you are using Skyward Ascent, it seems to essentially just freeze your velocity during that animation. And uh, what that means basically is, if you are just going forwards like this and you hit the space bar, you'll go up a little bit. But if you hold right click in your mouse, look straight up, and while that's happening, you then use Skyward Ascent, what will happen is, your current speed, which is mostly horizontal, you'll maintain that as you are going up vertically. And uh, this essentially just lets you burn through your four, five, or six vigor going up in a straight line super quick. And it essentially just means, yeah, you can fly wherever you want. You can get around the aisles so, so fast uh, that it's, it's pretty mad. So that's the main thing. The game doesn't really signpost you towards doing this, but I think that's really what you got to understand. The negative impact to your speed that happens from being pitched upwards, that is frozen during your Skyward Ascent. And you can basically use that to your advantage. And there you go. That's the most powerful tip, and if you never thought to do it, then it's a form of power in this system you never would have had, but now I've just made sure that everyone knows. Dragon riding is fine, but have you ever considered the Lockheed Martin F-35? Well, you're shit out of luck. You can't have an F-35 in the game, but this weak aura gets you pretty close. It, uh, well, basically will replace the standard Blizzard UI and it'll add in a few key features that help you supercharge your flight. There's a few of these and they're focused on just uh, making sure you get kind of optimal results out of the mechanics. So these will help you time your skyward ascent, right? So that you always keep your thrill of the skies and also there's a little pitch meter that will help you perfectly manage your pitch so that you maintain Thrill of the Skies and go as far as you can. It's pretty handy. And also, if you're a Weak Auras user, you can also get this Weak Aura, which will just flash up on your screen when you are near a, uh, a glyph. It just works with the existing glyph buff, but it's more noticeable. The next thing then, a useful macro. So here's the problem. Your muscle memory is attuned to your current mount and keybind, but dragon riding mounts cannot be used in the rest of the world. So what, you need to use even more vital key binding space for even more mounts? No, I've got you sorted. This macro is just incredible. It lets you access all your mounts with a single button. Which mount you use is based on whatever modifier key you use, be that your ground mount, your transmog yak, your auction house dinosaur if you're one of the uneaten rich, and of course the uh, dragon riding mount. It's absolutely dead handy and I highly recommend using this. Personally, I have mine key bound to uh, shift space. Races then. These are fantastic and they are in the format of both a solo time trial and a group format. Now, to do the time trials, you need to find the Bronze Dragon NPCs or marked in your mini map. Uh, later, they'll be marked in your full map when you've discovered them. Now, these are super fun. I would totally recommend trying to get the gold medal in every single one of these races. It's a great way to have some fun and also to train yourself and improve your action time. 
It's kind of nice to see WoW have this gameplay that's not necessarily MMO-like. It's more, I don't know, like uh, another genre of game. It almost brings me back to the days doing those infuriating flight challenges in the PS1 Spyro games. Anyway, there are achievements for these, and those achievements have rewards. Getting gold in every Waking Shores race gets you red hair for your renewed Proto Drake. The same in the Owner in Plains gets you red hair for the Velocity Drake. The same for the Azur Span gets you the High Wind Drake brown hair, and uh, Thaldrasis uh, gold will get you the Wilder Drake blonde hair. Now, if you get bronze in each zone's advanced race, that will unlock for you the red and gold armor for each of those uh, zone's dragons. It looks pretty damn badass. Uh, doing all the races uh, will actually earn you some pretty damn sweet looking cosmetic shoulder armor. Getting silver and everything gets you this companion, and gold and everything gets you the Isles Racer title. And the way that it says Isles Racer, the way that Isle is the prefix, it makes me almost hopium that they will add races to other continents in the future. Okay, that's actually all you need to know for this feature. It is a pretty basic fun feature to just go and have some fun with. But just in case you wanted to know what's up with it, if you've not been following the expansion news cycle, I thought we'd put this video together so you understand what's up. For me, seeing Blizzard put such a fantasy forward feature into the game is absolutely brilliant. I think they have absolutely nailed the landing on this one. And uh, I mean, if they can do this, what, uh, what else could they do? I mean, who knows, but it does seem that WoW's old engine can be taught some new tricks. Okay, that's it for me. Thanks for watching today's video, and if you also want to be helped out in Dragonflight, check out this one next.